Hi guys, it's Crystal. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you guys to create a graduation card that is already in the design images. So I'm going to go ahead and show you where that's at now and then we're going to print it out and then put this thing together. Now I'm going to show you another thing because we're also with this project so let me pull it up. So the first thing you're going to do is come to images and then you're going to type in graduation. Okay, and then you're going to, from here, you're going to scroll down until, and I'm going to try to link you guys directly to this, but you're going to scroll down until you come to this image right here. So we're going to create like this pop-up card, and you can see that it's free. So we're going to insert image. Okay, now once it pops up, you can see how big this is, so we're going to figure out how big this card is going to be. Because one thing about projects like this is they're going to come out huge. So you need to make sure if um, how big this card is going to be because you got all your pieces combined and stuff like that. So what we need to do is we need to figure out to get this by like five by seven. So, but that's just going to be the front side. So we know that we need it to be five. Um, you know, so it's going to be five wide, seven tall. So we know that we need it to be seven tall, but we need it to be ten wide. All right. So if that makes sense. So we need it to be 7 tall, 10 wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start bringing this up like this. And then I'll come back. Now what I'm going to do while I have this group together to make it a little bit easier, instead of ungrouping and regrouping, I'll just count each time. So I'll come by here and I know I need this to be 10 wide. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I need to bring that in until it's to the 10. So whoop. Let's see, let me bring that in just a few more squares and recount. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I need to bring it in one more square. Just like that. Let's double count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So now we can count the height here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. About 6 and a half. So I'm happy with 6 and a half by 7. That'll be fine by me. Um, cause I don't want to shrink this down any further and it become any, any smaller on the width. Okay. So let's leave it like that. So, um, let's go ahead. So it's not going to be the full seven. So basically it's going to be five by six and a half and I'm totally fine with that. So let's go ahead and get this printed out. And then once we get this done, we're going to come back here and we're going to create, um, well, let me go ahead and do that now. Let me show you what, what my plans is. Okay. So for the front of the card here, so I know that my card's going to be five by six and a half. So I'm going to make a front topper piece that's going to come on top of this, and I'm going to make it about. And this piece of paper here, I'm going to make a different color. It's not going to be this piece. I haven't decided yet. But the front of the card, we're going to use a heat embossing pen. So we're going to use the Ranger um, Perfect Medium pen, and I'll show you that here in just a second. We're going to be able to put that into our Cricut and draw with that and then we're going to be able to heat emboss. So we're going to put congratulations here on the front. So let me get another square going here. All right. So we know, like I said, the front of the card is going to be five by six and a half. So what I want to do is I'm probably going to bring this, let me unlock this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 4.75, 4.75 by, so we have six and a half. I'm going to do 6.25. 6.25, just like that. All right, then I'm going to lock it back. And then you can test fit this. This is exactly how this is going to fit on the card, just like this. Just give me enough to kind of go over it. I could shrink it down just a little bit more if I wanted to. Um, but I think I'm going to leave it roughly around like this. So let me go ahead and change this to white. You'll see what I'm doing here in a little bit. It's going to be a little bit confusing. So what I'm going to do is write off the words congratulations. All right, and then I'm going to change the font of that, and I think I'm going to do watermelon. All right, let me try the script and see if I want to do that. No, I think I'm going to go with regular watermelon. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to do the letter spacing on this to bring it together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and push this, the plus so I can see while I'm letter grouping this. So I'm going to come up here to letter spacing and I'm going to bring it in as close as I can.
All right, I think that looks good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of get this to where I want it to be. So what I'll do is I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna bring this down so I can see what's going on. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna put this on top of here so I can layer it and see exactly how it's gonna come out. Then I'm gonna have my congratulations. I want to kind of make it a little bit bigger like this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select both of these and I'm going to align. I'm going to center it up. Center. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach. Actually, I'm going to go back here. So congratulations. Okay. So first we're going to go ahead and click congratulations. We are going to come over here to where the little scissors are. We're going to change this to a right. We're going to have it right, but we're going to put in our ranger pin. All right, so now that we change that to right, this is going to cut. So I'm going to select both of these, and I'm going to hit attach. So that way those are attached, okay? So now what I'm going to do, so whenever this piece cuts out, we're going to heat emboss this, and it's going to go right on top of the card here for us. All right, so now that we've got everything ready to go, let's go ahead and hit make it, and I'll meet you right over at the machine. So the first things that it's asking us to do, so I've already got my black on my um, on my mat here. It's telling us to insert the um, stylus and our blade. I always use the silver for my paper. It doesn't matter. I just keep mine. Um, I have the gold one for the vinyl, and then I have um, I have the pink one for fabric, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the stylus. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and load this. I'm going to go ahead and hit go. Okay, so this first part's done, so we're going to go ahead and unload it. Okay, so you can see that has already got that uh, scored and cut for us, so we're just going to carefully peel this out of here, just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. The next step is going to be the card base, which I'm going to do in white, and it's going to also require the blade and the stylus. So I'm going to go ahead and load this now. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and hit go. Okay, so we're done with this one. I'm going to go ahead and get it out. Now for the card base, it just scored it down the middle and then cut it out. So you're just going to carefully pull that out so that's ready to go. Okay, so now for the tassel, I am going to be using a glitter um, cardstock. You don't have to do this, but this is what I'm going to use. I no longer need the stylus, so I'm going remove to remove it now. And I'm going to go ahead and insert this now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. Okay, so now you can see that it cut this out, so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this. And go ahead and carefully remove this. You could always use your tweezers. So here is our tassel, so I've got this. Okay, so now for the embossing, we're on, I decided to save. That was gonna be the first thing that was done, but I went ahead and saved it for last. So that way um, my embossing stays moist. So um, I just moved the mats around. So now we're on that, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use black because I'm gonna use the pen and I'm gonna do white um, embossing powder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead now, I've got my black on here. At this point, I want to take my embossing buddy. So you want to take your embossing buddy and you want to completely cover your entire paper. Now, I know that we're not going over everything, but I like to do that just to be safe in case it kind of comes over here a little bit. So I'm just going over um, the entire paper with my embossing buddy, making sure that it's covered so none of that embossing powder sticks, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and insert that now. And then this is the perfect uh, medium pen from Ranger. I know that's not wanting to come in. Let's see if maybe I come back this way. Anyways, I will have a picture of it anyways whenever working on this so you guys can see what this is. But it is a perfect pen. And this is the bullet. You get a bullet and a brush tip. And I like to use the bullet. So it looks like this. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to insert it right where you normally would your Cricut pens. You're gonna pop that in there, close it, and you wanna store these upside down the way that they are. That way your ink is always downwards. Okay, so now let's go ahead and hit go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and remove it. Now you can see on there where it did the um, embossing pin, so we're going to put the embossing powder on that. So very careful. I don't want to do a whole bunch of fingerprinting because we don't want any of that embossing powder to stick anywhere else. You're just going to carefully take the corner here and remove it from the mat, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So these are the pieces we cut out. So this is our embossing. I went ahead and did two because I'm going to show you heat embossing and some perfect pearls, okay? So now you can do whatever colors that you wanna do, but this is the way I'm doing it. And then we've got our glitter cardstock, and make sure you change that settings when you cut this piece to that glitter cardstock, okay? Then we've got our hat, and we've got our main base. So what we're gonna do, so we're gonna start with doing our embossing first. So let's go ahead and set these out of the way. So let's go ahead and start with the heat embossing first. We're just gonna pick one of these. And now we may learn during this that we should have done better letter spacing. Okay, so you'll learn through different fonts about whether you want to space them, because like I did this one here, and I should have spaced my letters out a little bit better, but these aren't like a cursive how, like this right here. So like this one right here is cursive, which is the same font I used here. I filled in this with my pen. I, I, had, I, did, this, I, I did this after the fact, so I wrote it with a Cricut pen. I filled it in with the brush one. Kind of got off a little bit, so like I knew that this one seemed okay. I should have just gotten better with filling that in. But like this is regular font. I should have gapped these out just a little bit. I should have used the letter spacing instead of bringing in, brought it out. And then this would have looked a whole lot better. Because like this DHS looks good, stuff like that. So we're about to find out if this one right here, the watermelon all font together like this, if it's going to look okay. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So what we've got is our embossing powder. I'm going to use orange here. Well, oh, I forgot. I was using white. I was playing with orange yesterday. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take the white here. And I'm going to go ahead and just get this on here. And this one is by Ranger. You can use your uh, whatever you have. All right, so it's going to look like this. And I'm probably going to go over it one more time in the other direction just to make sure I'm covering everything. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back into its container. We'll be right back. So I did black because I wanted the white on here because the graduation color's here. So let's go ahead and get this. Okay, 
So I can already see that my font is, this font right here is not gonna really work for me unless I gap these out a little bit better. Um, but this is what it's gonna look like. Um, so, so you kind of know that you can do the heat embossing. So it's just playing with the fonts and figuring out how close to get these. But we're gonna proceed forward, that way we can you can see how to put all this together. But let's go ahead and try the Perfect Pearls now. So say if you were gonna do it with the Perfect Pearls. I take my Perfect Pearls here. The brush I normally use is not sitting here, so we're just going to use this brush right here. So let's go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip into the Perfect Pearls and then just kind of take this onto the font here just like this. You don't want to pick up as much as I just did because that was way too much. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and carefully get that remaining back down in the container. Here. Just wipe and you can wipe over the whole thing because whatever's stuck to the um, perfect medium is going to stay. Just like that. So there it would be if you were using the gold look how cool that looks for the perfect pearls. So let's proceed forward with this one here. But like I said, you would want to get that font spaced out just a little bit more to have that perfection. Okay. So let's go ahead and put this thing together. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. Okay. So now let's proceed forward on the steps. So we've got our two options here, like I said, so you can heat emboss or you can do the perfect pearls. Okay, so now for the card with the uh, graduation hat and the tassel, um, this is how we're going to do this. So the first thing that I wanna do is let's go ahead and crease our card, our base, if you will. All right, so we've got that creased. So now what we've got to do is figure out exactly how this is going to work. So let's go ahead and do our crease line. So the line that it already scored for us. Let's go ahead and get that down. All right. Now for the next thing, if you go back on Cricut Design Space, this is kind of more up and it's over towards this this line right here is not lined up with this line it's actually over just a little bit so we've got to figure out exactly how this little guy will fold so i think it's going to go somewhere right in here and then whenever it folds down it's going to come so we're going to go ahead and test that out now so what I'm going to do is I want to do some test placements. So to do some test placements to make sure where this goes, because like I said, it's just showing you an image. It doesn't show you how to do it. So we're going to do this together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some um, little dots here. Um, that way I can pull this back off. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a couple dots and get those down on here. Just so I can kind of figure out my placement and be able to pull this back up. So if on the image, like I said, you can see that it's over. So it looks like it comes right on the line like this. So let's go ahead and test this placement really quick. So what I'm gonna do is just set my dots like this and I'm gonna attempt to bring this up. Because when this folds, it's going to fold down. So I'm just kind of testing this guy out a little bit very carefully. All right, it looks like it needs to come down just a hair. So I can see that's popping out, if that makes sense. I know this is probably gonna get confusing really fast. So, but I've already done this once, so I already know. <laughs> okay, so it looks like that's pretty good, so I can go ahead and fold that, and that's exactly where that guy needs to go. So you would think, so you can see everything is inside, you would think when you're doing this project that it would kinda go down here. So let me show you the first one. So on my first one here, this is another way that you can do it. Um, what I did was, you can see that it kind of goes like this, but this right here is not gonna work very well, which we'll figure out here in a second if that's gonna work. What I did was kind of came down towards the bottom and it folds in like this. But what I had to do was make a new crease line that's kind of diagonal a little bit to get it further down. But if you put it more, like I said, and you do the dots first to do this to see where the placement is, it's a lot easier so you don't mess up like I did, all right? So what I'm gonna do to be able to get it in place now, once you play with that with your dots and you know that's where you need it to be, what I'm going to do is shut the card. I'm gonna hold it down with one hand so you can see my little dot there. I'm gonna make sure I hold this guy really well. So I'm gonna pull this dot off and I'm gonna go ahead and get my adhesive on here.
All right, so now what I'm gonna do is the same thing to the other side. I can pull that little dot off. And I'm gonna go ahead and run my tape glue runner here. And I'm just gonna fold my card over here. I'm gonna make sure that works really good before I kind of get that down. So you can see, hopefully that's all in frame there. So the way this is designed, it's not gonna fold completely flat, okay? From what I can see, the way that they have their angles. Like I said, it takes a little bit of playing around. So when you go to mess with this, you really want to use some sort of removable adhesive to kind of play with it for first. And don't be making like um, your main creases yet until you kind of figure out exactly the placement. It's a little bit confusing on this one. So, and then once you do that, like I said, you'll pop one side off, get its adhesive down, pop it down, flip it over, do the same thing, just holding it in place. It'll do this, okay? So then for the next step is on this little hat, you can see there is a, a little um, opening. So you're gonna take the arrow part of this and you're just gonna pop it right inside and it's gonna grab on. So now when I shut this, it'll just pop around. So you're just gonna be able to do it just like that. Now, if you're worried about this moving, because I was playing with it a while ago, if you're worried about it because it kind of wants to flap around, what you can do is take a little bit of adhesive and get that to stay in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, another one of my um, glue dots here, and I'm gonna pop it on this side of the arrow. Hopefully you guys can pick this up. I'm gonna pop this on this side of the arrow. All right. I'm gonna pull back and I'm gonna get that down just like that. So now when it folds, and it'll kind of have a little bit of that a crease, kind of a little bit, it didn't crease it all the way, but when it folds just like this, and you can see when you pop it open, there it is. So there it is. So now all we gotta do is put the front on and we're ready to go. And then now all you, you can do is you can write your little sentiment in here, you can stamp something, whatever you wanna do. You could add a little gift card. Um, so now what we're gonna do is add on the front side of our card, and you can always do that first before you do this. So what I'm gonna do so I don't bend this guy up, my um, tassel, I'm gonna set it on the outside of my card like that, so that way it is um, not gonna get bent, okay? All right, so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna run some double-sided adhesive on the back side of this, or you could use your glue tube or whatever you wanna use, your Tombow, and you're just gonna get this laid down right on top. I'm gonna take my bone folder and kind of push that adhesive in so it'll work out. And this is the one with the perfect pearls. That's what it'll look like. And then you can put your tassel back. So there it is. Super cute, I love it. So I hope you guys found this helpful. That is two different ways to, um, to use embossing powder and your perfect pearls. So um, like I said, you wanna use, and I'll have a picture um, up here so you can see these these uh there's the bullet and then there's a brush pen it comes two in a package for five dollars you want to use the bullet in your machine and you can do this like i said i would want to space my letters out a little bit better but um you can use this in your cricut um it doesn't matter whether you have a cricut maker any brand of cricut and you can just put this as long as it has a pen holder and uh, it'll fit right in so i hope you guys found this helpful if you did please hit the like button down below and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one